Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Sunday, January 28, 2024. May the good Lord be with you today and may his peace be upon you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and that you will testify of his goodness in your life. Our reading today comes to us from Genesis chapter 3, reading verses 1 to 18. And it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of every fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Verse 5 For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6 And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and eat. Eat. 7. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the midst of the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the the trees of the garden. Verse 9 And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Verse 10 And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. 11 And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? As thou eaten of the tree, Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. Verse 12. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. 14 says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all beasts of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. 15 says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, but thou shalt bruise his heel. 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 17. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. 18 and last says, Thorns also and thistle shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field and I say Amen to God be the glory 
great things he has done. God is such a marvelous God. And his work and his wonders to perform. When you think about the goodness of God, when you think about the creation, when you think about all that God has put into place, into existence, you can only say that God is amazing. Now, this is a story that we all know very well. It's a story that speaks to the fall of man in Genesis chapter 2. After Satan was thrown out of heaven because of his rebellion, he came down to the earth and he decided that he was going to read Avok in the earth. And so, as soon as God made man, Satan's plan was in motion because he wanted to get back at God by destroying man and infecting his creation with sin. Now, after God made man and gave the garden to man, there was one creature in the garden that, according to further reading, we were told that it was a beautiful creature to look at. Now, the devil decided to possess or to enter into this creature, which we call a snake, the Bible say a serpent, it's the same thing. And one day, while Eve was by herself in the garden, the snake approached her and asked her the question, if God told her that she couldn't eat from the tree of the garden. Now, the woman responded by saying, yes, God told us that we can eat of the trees of the garden except one the tree that is in the midst of the garden he told us that we should not eat of it and we should not touch it because the day that we do that we will die no the serpent okay but you know that god is lying to you right because he's trying to hold the best from you so i'm just paraphrasing right now he start to manipulate the whole scenario you now to to make her doubt herself and to doubt what God said to her. So he said, no man, if you eat of the tree, you won't die. In fact, you will gain wisdom beyond your imagination and you will become like God himself. Hmm, what a statement. And so he persuaded her and she decided that, okay, I'm going to give this thing a try because... You know, I have always seen this tree and it looks so pleasing. The fruits look so luscious. And yeah, if it's going to give me wisdom and make me a god, might as well. I give it a try. Why would God tell me not to eat of this? Still paraphrasing. And so she took off the fruit and she ate. But she not only ate it, but she also took it to Adam and Adam ate of it. You know, it is so interesting that when she took the fruit to Adam, there's no record that say that he confronted her about it and say, told her that he, he wasn't going to have it or asked her why did she pick the fruit in the first place and then went on to eat the fruit. I didn't read anything to that effect. So I don't know what conversation took place between them. The reading did say that he took the fruit and eat it. And so... After eating the fruit, the Bible says that their eyes were open and now they realized that they didn't have on any clothes. So all along, the righteousness of Christ covered them. And so they didn't realize that they were naked because what? As I said, they were clothed in the righteousness of Christ. They were sinless being at the time. And now that they have become sinners, the righteousness of Christ has been removed and so they are exposed. And that is what sin does. Sin exposes you. So we must stay clear of sin. If you don't want to walk around naked, metaphorically now, you need to stay away from sin, right? And so 
One day while they were there, God came down in the garden and was walking around. Now, this is a regular practice for God because he oftentimes come down and commune with man, you see, because that's just who God is. He didn't just make man and say, okay, you know, I give you the earth and I give you all of this. So, you know, just take care of it and I will see you sometime in the future. God regularly meet with man, you know, because man was his creation and man was his friend. And so they heard the voice of God and they heard God walking in the, in the garden and God called Adam. Adam, where are thou? He responded by saying, well, you know, we heard you coming. And so we, we hid because we didn't want you to see us the way we are. We were exposed. We were naked. And so we had to, to, to sew fig leaves together to make ourselves some clothes so that you don't, you know, see our nakedness. I love the way that God does things. He's so clever in his method. God is trying to work, work, work the mind now like he doesn't know what happened. So he wants them to think about their action. So here is God's response. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree that I told you not to eat of? The man responded by saying, My wife gave me the fruit. This woman that you gave me, she's the one that gave it to me. And because I love her so much, I had to take a bite from the fruit. So I, I trusted her over you. That's another way that, that he's saying it. I'm still paraphrasing. Here, we realize the blame game start to be played. Now God asked the woman, what is it that you have done? Why did you do such a thing? The woman said, well, the serpent is the one that tempted me. He's the one that forced me. He, be he beguiled me and I did eat. So nobody wants to take responsibility for their action. And how many times are we like that? How many times we refuse to take responsibility for our own action? So many times. Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed until the day you die, right? And thus you will eat. And what is thus according to the Bible? In this context, meat, right? Our flesh because the Bible says that man was created from the dust of the earth so he's talking about the snake will eat meat so I imagine that the snake was eating vegetation before sin and so he went on to schooling them are reproving them and he says that he is gonna multiply he's gonna multiply a woman's sorrow she will conceive through Pain. So it means that when she gives birth, she's going to feel a lot of pain. And he told the man, he is going to have to till the ground for him to get food to eat. He's going to have to work hard. Life won't be that easy anymore because of what they both did. The reading went on to say that by the sweat of your brow or his brow, he will eat. So in other words, if you don't work, you won't be able to eat or he won't be able to eat. Now, the message to us this morning is that God expects all our obedience. When God instructs us to do something or not to do something, we are to be obedient because he knows what is best for us. Whatever he says to us, he has a reason. He's trying to keep us safe. And I don't know why we feel that we must always question God. We are not going to always understand how he does things. If we did, then he wouldn't be God. No, I'm not saying that. Sometimes certain things don't puzzle our mind. But do not go beyond that and try to, to doubt God. Because once doubt creep in, it's almost impossible to get it back out. Doubt is the enemy of a Christian. And so... When we don't understand, ask God to help us understand. And if it is necessary that we understand, then he will reveal it to us. Amen. And so let us not be disobedient children. God do not appreciate disobedience. And so I encourage us today that as we think about the reading, that we will allow the Holy Spirit to help us to walk in the way of the Lord, to follow his precepts and to trust his leading, knowing that he will lead us to the path and through the path 
of righteousness. God loved us. That is why he, he made us. And even after we caused sin to enter into the world because of our disobedience, he still sent his son to die for our sin. He didn't wipe us out and say, okay, I'm going to make a whole new set of people and a whole new set of creation. No. And the interesting thing about this is that that plan was in place even before man sinned. So God always planning ahead. No, that is love. Because when, because if he had chosen to destroy man, he would have been in his right. Because what? He is God and he alone has the final say. And so friends, I encourage you, I encourage myself, let us be obedient and stop blaming others for our own faults. When we do something wrong, stop trying to play the blame game like Adam and Eve. Adam blame his wife, his wife playing the serpent, and then I guess in the, in the mind of the serpent, the serpent was probably blaming God too, because nobody wanted to take responsibility for their action. It's always somebody else's fault. No, we need to take responsibility for our action, hmm? because you were previously informed that the thing was wrong, and the thing that was dangerous and it will bring you hurt so how now when you find yourself in trouble you want to pass the buck to someone else do you think that's fair of course not and so when we stay close to jesus we don't have to worry about these things we won't find ourselves in unfavorable situation where we have to be ashamed of ourselves because we refuse to be obedient or refuse to do what is right and so the lord has provided a way of escape for us. He says that my blood is sufficient for you. And so the, the saying goes that abstinence is better. It's better to be safe than to be sorry. So may we continue to walk in the way of the Lord. May we continue to trust him. This life isn't easy as we listen to the reading and that is because of sin. But the Lord has not forsaken us. He's still there and he's waiting for us. And so be encouraged and be strengthened in him, knowing that he will see us through to the very end. God bless you and have a wonderful rest of the day. Amen.